munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie and welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking a little bit about travel carriers. This is one of the most highly requested topics on my comments in many, many, many of my videos of product reviews and just reviews in general talking about enclosures like say the KT enclosures and people asking me if that enclosure is a good travel carrier. So let me just tell you a little bit about travel carriers for gerbils, hamsters, and mice and to tell you what is appropriate and what's not and show you examples of things that we currently have at the rescue here that we use as travel carriers or have been gifted to or received. So travel carriers, the purpose is from getting the animal safely from point A to point B. And these carriers can come in two different types. Type one being just a short trip down the road, maybe takes about 10 minutes to get to the place and then 10 minutes back or long distance travel carriers where they need to have food, hide and water inside of their travel carrier because they might need those essentials throughout the day. And it's not a good idea to starve or to dehydrate or to cause discomfort for your animal during that time. So let's talk first about wire carriers. There are some that are travel carriers for birds, but then they list them as like for other animals too. And that's actually type one we're gonna be sharing with you guys today. This is for your hamster or for your bird because it came with a bird perch inside of here. This can be purchased at Petco. And the way that you open this one up is just by the front here. It opens like this and then you just close it. And the way to disassemble this is by taking the sides off here, the handle at least, opening it up on the side because they have little clips on the edges here, opening up the flaps. And then I was gonna say, I was just gonna remove that, but it's already falling off. But basically that is the pan. The pan is plastic and then the wire is like this. No hamster, shrivels, or mice will be able to escape through here, so no problem, guys. So on Petco's website, this is called the You and Me Small Animal Pet Carrier in large, even though it's actually not that large. And for some reason, the picture makes it look a little bit different, but it is online $19.99, but on their website right now, it is $15.29 as I'm viewing this. So if you need an option, that is one of them. It has good ventilation. It does not have a lot of pan depth, so you're gonna be having bedding get kicked up and outside of the enclosure. And if that's not what you're looking for because you want your animal to be cozy, I would say go with a different carrier. Next carrier is also from Petco. I don't really see this one at um, PetSmart, but it is called the Carry in Cage, the perfect starter critter cage that converts to a carrier. This is actually considered an enclosure, an actual starter enclosure. It literally says so. And critter wear, why the heck would you do this? This does come with the bowl, which is not inside here. And it does come with a wheel, a very tiny, I wanna say four inch wheel. This is awful. I have seen Syrian hamsters be stuffed inside of here and people rehoming them as is. And I have seen this become an actual cage for the hamster thinking this is fine. But it looks like they are trying to advertise dwarfs and mice and Roboroskis, but Again, it's just, why would you market this as a starter cage? This is not a starter cage, this is a carrier. So let's treat it as a carrier today. It does have a top. Does this top open up? I've never actually got it to open up, but hey, what do you know? It does open up. <laughs> I've never done that because I've always taken it off the sides. It does have a handle for easy to carry. It does provide good ventilation. The only problem is if they start chewing the bars like right here, for instance, this one's been chewed up, then your bars can start to rust just because that part of the metal is exposed. So that's why it is coated in white to prevent rusting. But after a while, it's gonna get dirty and you're probably gonna have to replace this. That just is the problem with wire enclosures is that if they don't have good coating, it will come off and you will have to replace it. There is also inside of here clips on the side and there is a pan depth of what looks like 2.5 inches. So it does provide some bedding, but you still have the problem of it kicking outside of the wires here, making a mess in your car, which it's not always the best thing. I have to vacuum my car so much due to my rescuing and transporting. So this right here, I really don't like taking with me. I have used this when it came to the nebulizer when I was treating Nook the gerbil for his pneumonia. This was really great because I was able to put in 
in the nebulizer nozzle here because with all other enclosures besides a wire enclosure, unfortunately it was just not doable to attach it. So that was probably like the only time I really liked using one of these as like a holding container for treatment of an animal that was within our care. This is $14.99 on Petco's website, but on sale right now, it looks like it's about $11.49. This is an option, but just keep in mind, it comes with accessories that you are not gonna be needing. Next, we have an enclosure that's kind of, I wanna say new to the market and not really many people have it, but it is the Iris Small Animal Carrier. And I just wanna make a note, they do have a photo of two Syrians together. I do not like that at all. It's false advertising and it makes it seem like it's okay to do. Don't do it guys. Syrians are solitary. They're only able to be together up until eight weeks of age. But inside of here, you open it up. It is a very interesting plastic. It doesn't feel cheap like the other plastics like Critterware or the You and Me carrier that I showed previously. It is a very slick, and smooth plastic. And I just, I wish I could describe the plastics and the type of texture and material a little bit better to you. But this plastic is a lot better quality, I would say, than the others. It does come with its own water bottle, which I don't have, but it would be positioned here. Unfortunately, the hamsters that have been inside of this carrier have chewed the frame up here, the holder frame. So that's just something to keep in mind. There is a bunch of holes everywhere, including around here and up here. So it does provide a decent amount of air circulation and airflow, and it does have a handle. And it is quite lightweight, but this carrier is one of the more expensive carriers that honestly I would not get unless you really want to be fancy about it. And on their website, it says this is actually extra small, which is quite decent for the size. It's not really an extra small. And for whatever reason, my phone's not working, so I can't tell you the price, but if I remember correctly, it's around $21.99 or maybe $23.99. Very expensive. I have not had any problems with this either, which is good because I've had some problems with a few ones that I'm about to show you. And just construction wise, it seems pretty sturdy and solid. So of course, if it's gonna be more, that means it's good, right? So in this case, yeah, because this right here, this part has not come apart. It hasn't come off. Hamsters have not actually opened this up. It does have a very strong and sturdy clip and it has a good handle, but keep in mind if you wanna be eco-friendly, I love the enclosures you're gonna be getting today are just made of nothing but plastic. And I don't know if this has been recycled or not. This one has been made in China. And that is the Iris Hamster Carrier. Let's talk about a carrier that I've had for a very long time that was recommended to me in the beginning. And I have gotten so many of these and I just want to make my own review specifically of this carrier, but I'll tell you a little bit of details about it. This is the Living World Carrier in small and large. So this carrier, I just wanna say, is great when stacked. So if you have multiple animals, small animals that is, it's great for just taking apart and stacking. So right here you see that it has two handles and that the opening, you have to push it in, hold the lip right here, use your finger, cause that's why there's this big hole here and pull it up. And this is a very strong plastic for the bottom, but a very poorly designed flimsy top. And I have a problem with this because this easily cracks and it easily breaks at the hinges here. So because this is a very small, thin plastic that is being held between this here, this when opening it up, you can probably see that right there, that very fine line of plastic in between this plastic. That breaks quite often and it just, becomes such a burden. I believe the small is around eight to 10 and the large is anywhere upwards of 15. The online prices have been fluctuating, so I can't give you an exact price for these ones. But with that in mind, I have actually had a lot of escapees with these travel carriers. And the way that they've been escaping has not been through that technique because once it's locked into place, it really doesn't matter for the back here because that lock is definitely right there. But there is some of my carriers that the lock is actually easy to just pull open so they're pulling it, pretend like there's a hamster in here. They pull it in from the inside and then somehow they're able to push it up. And I've actually had, while I'm driving, hamsters do that. And I'm like, nope! <laughs> 
put my hand on it. Nope, you're not getting out. But they've popped this open and I have actually, while waiting at the Starbucks line, had one of the hamsters that I was adopting that day just happen to pop it in the back. I kept them in the back all nice and secure with the uh, straps in place. Kept them in the back. They popped it open. I thought I heard something. I couldn't see because they were inside of my bag because I have a bag that I place these inside of so that it's more secure and it doesn't cause a lot of noise because car rides are just terrible when it comes to small animals. It stresses them out. It's not very fun. They're taken out of their comfort zone into one that is not so comforting. And unfortunately, yeah, um, I did not know. And then as soon as I was moving, I saw the hamster from my passenger side run out from under the seat. And I'm like, put it in park. Turn off the car real quick because I don't want I don't want anyone to freak out in the Starbucks drive-through line, which the person behind me is probably going, what the heck is that woman doing? Unbuckled, reached out, grabbed the hamster, and then put her back in and went, why? And on that same day, guess what? Different carrier, but it was the same one. Same one, but different, different, different one. Cause I was too freaked out at that point to use the same one again. Another one escaped. It was in my passenger seat this time, so I was able to see it happen and go, nope. <laughs> But when I'm not driving with another person in the car, usually I keep them in the back or I'll just keep them in the front in the seat when I'm alone. But that is something that I just don't like and I'm actually no longer going to be using these carriers. So once they are completely torn apart and broken inside, I'm just gonna be tossing them. They were great, but because I use them so constantly and I'm constantly opening and closing, opening and closing them, that's probably my issue. If you are someone that does not travel that often or has a rescue or is a transporter for a rescue, you. you really don't need to worry about the things that I'm saying, but just keep that in mind at a certain point in your uh, carrier keeping <laughs> that unfortunately your carrier is gonna get worn down. And this can easily just come apart like this and you can clean it and stack it like this. And same thing for the bigger ones here. They do the exact same thing and it's easy to store. Next, we have this carrier from, oh, is this another Living World? I think this one might be. What does it say? Yep, it says Living World. And this is actually supposed to be like a beta fish carrier slash tank. It's supposed to be like a 0.5 or maybe a gallon. No, this doesn't even look like a gallon. I don't know. I don't know what this is. But I was actually handed this during a surrender intake of mice. And so the mice actually came inside of here. And this is pretty okay. I haven't had any problems. I haven't had this break at all, but it is made of plastic. It does have little ventilation right here and it opens like so. And it's just, I guess it does the job. I don't know how much this is, but I just wanted to make a note of that. The living world does have something like this. It is plastic. So yeah, it just transported mice in it. It is on the smaller side. Unfortunately, I wouldn't typically be using this for like hamsters unless I didn't have any more carriers or maybe my carriers were all dirty. I knew for a fact that the locking mechanism here could not have them escape. And like sometimes when I'm doing my deep cleans, I put them in carriers. And this one I've just used because it's just there. And the top will pop off at the hinges right here. And that's completely fine. It's very easy to assemble and disassemble. So I just wanna make a mention of that. Second to last is the carriers that I am currently using and will continue to use. They have really great benefits and I would like to just share that with you today. Much like the Living World carriers that I also forgot, you can have a lot of bedding inside of here and that's really great when you have burrow animals and you wanna keep them comfortable. But in this situation, I have what is known online as the Critter Keepers or Petco carriers, cause all these are from Petco. But we have the small Petco carriers. They come with a yellow, black or blue lid. They're around this size. They are for rodents, reptiles, and fish. The blue one's typically the fish one. The yellow one is for the critters. And then I forgot what the black one was for. Was the black one for reptiles? I don't remember. I know green is for reptiles. And this one is actually the bigger version. So this is the small, this is the big. And these are really great because you can pack a lot of bedding inside of here. It's very safe and secure. I typically don't pop the lids off because unfortunately for the small, the lid is very tiny and sometimes it's hard to open up and hard to close. Same with the big one, even though it's much bigger, the opening for the top isn't that great, but it's very easy to just take these apart from the sides and just pop them open like that. I've had hamsters chew the top, but they can't really chew it. So let's take a look at the lid on the inside here. There's really nothing to grab at, it is very smooth. So I don't see a problem with this. However, just keep in mind that unfortunately, if you open this up, which I don't, 
But if you open this part up a lot, the hinges will eventually start to break. This could crack. This could just like completely come off. So just keep that in mind. As well as the material. The material will eventually crack. It's not the best plastic, but these have lasted me so much more than the living world ones because this one is even thinner plastic than this. This is very thin because it's supposed to be lightweight. This does have a little bit more heaviness to it, but this quality is not really great. So use this. This provides you with so much area space for bedding. You can stack it up. And if I want to keep them in place without them popping the lids off, this is the carrier to use. And these carriers are roughly, I believe this one is around $10. And I believe this one is around like, I want to say five to $6. So it's actually a really good deal. These are very cheap, very sturdy for the most part, and they get the job done. But last but not least, we have what people keep asking me about, which is the Critter Trails or the the smaller cages advertised online or in store as appropriate care when they actually are not. Let's keep in mind too that if you're going to be using one of these, it should be one level. Now, this one right here has a top part. It's a loft. So it does have, say for instance, this tube here. This tube I don't really like. So if it's just one part without the loft, that would be great. Sometimes I'll use this carrier for dwarfs or for long trips, but you got to make sure that it's not too tall because if they have a lot of height and they don't have any ledges in there, because maybe you've taken out all the ledges because of the vertical space and stuff, they could climb and they could fall and injure themselves. So it's best to keep them in something that is ground and isn't really too big because you don't want them moving around in there a lot. I say don't put a wheel inside of here if you are traveling long distance. Just because the wheels that can't fit inside of here are usually way too small, so don't have a wheel in here. It does provide at least three inches of bedding, but you're gonna be having that flow over um, if you put it at the very top. You can include a water bottle, which usually the water bottle that comes with sits back here. But if that stops working, you can actually attach your own with a bottle wire clip to the side of it. And these are just really great to use if you accidentally got bad care and upgraded it. You can at least save these for a holding container or a travel carrier. So these are just great for long travels. So we're not traveling that much anymore, so we're actually not using a lot of these, but I like to keep them around because I like to show people the different types of KT Critter Trails and hopefully eventually make videos, educational videos about them. So that's why you might see inside of the rescue at any given time, these cages because they either are travel carriers or I'm gonna eventually make a video about them. I have yet to do so because I'm just disorganized right now. What can I say? I'm sorry guys, I tried my best. <laughs> but those are the options out there and there's also options of having cloth or fabric-like carriers that you might see alongside, for instance, like the cages like these or like the bird slash small animal carry that I showed you at the beginning of this video at Petco. But honestly, I don't like fabric. They can chew through it. They can make a mess of it. I just say stick to the basics of plastic because fabric will get destroyed by chewers that can chew through just about anything. So thank you guys for watching today's video about travel carriers. I hope this is very helpful to you. If you liked it, hit like to show support comment down below with anything you'd like to say or what carrier you're currently using and subscribe if you're new here and would like to become a part of the munchkin family and i'll see you around in the next video bye everyone